Massive open online courses have made it easy for people to gain access to quality educational materials and training. As good as most MOOCs are, they are designed for international audiences. Thankfully, a few startups in the edutech space are creating similar platforms targeted at primary and secondary students. One of such is PassNowNow.com, founded by Toyosi Akerele Ogunshiji, founder PassNowNow.com. So the state of education in Nigeria today, um, what would you say about it? Uh, you know, Chukwemek, I'm very worried about the state of Nigeria's education. And it's normal because sometimes, you know, we're building corporations, we're talking about the strength of the private sector. We're looking out for leaders, quality leaders, very conscientious, um, very well prepared for public office. And we're not raising children that have any form of competitive advantage over their colleagues in other parts of the world. Um, number two, I don't know, I don't see the commitment on the, on the side of the government and even on the side of the, you know, of the private sector to be able to elevate the quality of education and maybe even the stakeholders. Perhaps the most important stakeholders in the education system who are the teachers. Um, I would like to see a country, to be in a country where teachers are as highly paid and given equal remuneration, equal respect and regard, as much as bankers, doctors and lawyers, and other, you know, very prestigious, you know, professionals are. Um, I believe that, number one, in Nigeria today, the people who become our teachers are people who have searched for jobs everywhere and didn't get, decide that, well, we're going to be teachers. Number two, you have very unqualified teachers um, who many times are not even as good as the students they're teaching in class. Number three, you've then got highly demotivated teachers who do not feel like stakeholders in a process where they're supposed to be the most primary, you know, people that you consult by, that are consulted by the government, by the parents, and by the, you know, by, by the private sector. So you think about all these issues and then you wonder the quality of the schools. You think about children that are learning, sitting on the floor in very terrible, on, you know, on terrible environments where no form of wholesome learning can happen in those, those spaces. And then you want to put the students side by side, the child in Ghana, in Finland, in Canada, in the UK and in the US and other countries of the world that are prioritizing education. Just a few weeks ago, you probably heard that Rwanda, in Rwanda, public schools, um, private schools are shutting down because the quality of public schools are you know, have increased uh, drastically and significantly. And I don't know how Nigeria would remain or begin to, or, or continue to earn the title of being the giant of Africa. How do you think we can take full advantage of today's technology? Um, first, I think that technology um, would be a very potent tool in the transformation of Nigeria's education. Uh, because I think, number one, we need to begin to look at democratizing access to quality education content for children, um, especially the ones who come from low-income families in low-income communities, rural communities. Now, you think about the fact that schools are not even, we have inadequate schools that would cater to the needs of um, Nigerian children. Take Lagos, for example, 21 million people. Um, the number of schools that you have would not. And Lagos is even, Lagos is like a staple success story where you talk about Nigeria's uh, education in Nigeria, correct? Then you need to think about the real rural communities in the east and the north and other parts of the country. So technology would, number one, democratize that access because you would now begin to embrace the concept of self-oriented learning environments that do not restrict children or teachers to physical spaces or physical schools or physical infrastructure for them to be able to learn. Number two, you begin to think about how technology would create personalized learning so children are able to learn at their own pace, read ahead, prepare ahead of the teachers, ahead of class. And number three, you think about the concept of disruptive innovation, how you, technology has impacted various sectors in Nigeria, financial technology, uh, payments, e-commerce. But you think about how health care and education are, you know, the two areas that are really suffering. One, because they require huge resources, 
huge widespread commitment from multi-level commitment from ad administrators from various stakeholders it costs a lot of money to be able to put content together yes but many many on the public on the public or the policy side will argue that it's expensive setting up such infrastructures with technologies what do you think it's not as expensive <laughs> Someone said that if you think that education is expensive, try ignorance. It's not as expensive. It's cheaper to build a huge technology framework that provides access, that, that provides an open source. Where